I first came to Ocarito in 98, so um, I got to see Kiwi for the first time in 99. So 1999 was the first time that I saw Kiwi in the wild, and that's when I got hooked. But the key to what I do is they do not know me. I know them very well and I can read um, what they do, but they have no idea that I see them every night. What I do is um, pretty special, but also um, taken a lot of ownership and care into making sure that the bird has no or zero disturbance when a trip is ongoing. I'm in the right place at the right time to do it, but it's one of the most difficult things you can imagine to see a kiwi in the wild and try and make sure that the eight or nine or seven or three or five people who are with me are not disturbing that bird. So um, the key is, again, zero disturbance on the bird, and I think I'm the only one doing it because, because it's not easy and I think you have to be the right person to take ownership to make sure the key values of Kiwi are installed, meaning that they must not be disturbed. How can I not get involved with Kiwi where I live? You know, I live in Ocarito, um, a very small place, not very many people, but lots of kiwi on my back door, doorstep. So how can I not get involved would be my answer. It seems a pretty, pretty obvious to me why I should get involved. It's in the heart. It's in English. It's in the heart. Okay. Here's the thing, I think kiwis, the bird, are iconic to New Zealanders. And I get a lot of New Zealanders coming out on a trip and I ask them, why is the kiwi, the bird, iconic to you as an individual? And, uh, and here's the thing, I get probably, if I have 10 different people, 10 different New Zealanders, I'll get 10 different answers. So kiwi is iconic to New Zealanders because it's personal to them. It's not one specific reason why a kiwi is personal to you, it's your own thing. So, um, yeah, it, it's what makes Kiwi iconic to New Zealanders. Now I live here in New Zealand, so there's no bloody difference as far as I'm concerned. I've chosen to live here. There are five types of, of Kiwi in New Zealand. Um, starting with uh, uh, the North Island, the North Island Brown, um, there's probably um, about 50 to 60,000 North Island brown kiwis in the North Island. And then we've got some little spotted kiwi on some offshore islands in and around the North Island. And there's probably about 5,000 of those. And then we get down to um, the South Island and we've got the um, great spotted kiwi. And um, I'm not very good on my numbers here, but I think there's a quite a lot. There's probably about uh, uh, 10,000 to 15,000 great spotted kiwi. And then we come further south and we come to Okarito Kiwi and there's only 385. And we go further south and we've got the Tokaweka and there are three types of, of Tokaweka. Um, the Haast being again a very rare subspecies of Tokaweka, there's only about 400 odd. Um, and then Stewart Island and Fiordland um, Tokaweka. So, um, yeah. We'll, I search for kiwi and I search for the rarest kiwi and uh, yeah there's only roughly 385 in total so you can see from the varying um, you know if we're looking, talking to thousands of others there's only 400 and 385 of roe the, the okarito brown so the rarest of the rarest of the rarest yeah Oh, that's a question I always kind of ask people to come on my trip. Why, why do you think I know? How, do you, how did I know? Um, but um, to give you a, 
a better answer. It's just through years of experience, watching, learning, getting into the mind of a Kiwi and reading what a Kiwi is doing, what a Kiwi wants to be doing, where a Kiwi wants to be going, and just reading that, putting all that information up into here kind of, and um, trying to, it helps making a really good decision because the hardest thing that, the hardest thing I do is not finding the bird, it's making sure the people with me, the eager people with me, um, want to see the bird as well. So finding a kiwi can be the easy bit, the hard bit is making sure eight, nine, five, whatever amount of people want to see this bird as well. So if, if I can read what a kiwi does, then I'm able to get people in a really good position. So if a bird comes out onto the track, we're now making zero noise. So the bird is not disturbed. So that's one of the key things that um, I've learned where a bird can go, where it, where it hunts for food. They're certainly not habitual but um, years and years of experience. So no, they're definitely wild and um, from experience, these run away at the slightest movement. So wild birds do that, tame birds come and approach you because they think they're gonna be fed. So they're definitely wild birds. What I've given people is an avenue to see a bird in the wild and um, it's different people who come on the trip. People who realise it's going to be tough, people who realise they're going to have to put effort in, and people realise that they're not going to see a kiwi 100%. If they come out with me, there's always a chance of not seeing a bird. So it's not really about the bird, it's about the person's de decision to come out on a trip because they know that it's not guaranteed. But going to a kiwi house, you're almost guaranteed to see a bird behind glass. But people these days are what I call interactive tourists. They want to interact with the wildlife. They want to interact with nature. That's exactly what I do. We get out into a wild bit of bush and people are interacting with that bush and more importantly, they're interacting with one of the rarest birds in the world.